Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior XD Evangelist here at Adobe, joined by the one and only Kevin Lee. How are you, Kevin? Hi, everyone. I'm doing good. Um, just been at my house and, you know, focusing on design. Um, but yeah, just super excited to be here. Well, it's great to have you. Uh, you know, usually I come on these streams incredibly happy and excited. But honestly, you know, today feels a little bit different, and I'm sure you're feeling this, Kevin. Um, George Floyd was murdered last week. And as we have all seen on Twitter, social media, and the news, it's just, it's a weird time. It's, it's a sad time. It's an angry time. And we're all... We're all seeing this all unfold live. And unfortunately, a lot of this has been happening for many, many years. And, you know, we, we def we're definitely going to get to designing. We're definitely going to try to have a good time throughout the stream. But I, I feel this is something we should talk about, right? Um, what are you seeing on your end, Kevin? Yeah, I mean, it's just been um, crazy just having, you know, the LA curfew, um, Yesterday it was like from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. today. Uh, there's just, you know, a lot of people, you know, in downtown LA, Melrose, Santa Monica, just uh, rioting. And um, yeah, a lot of, you know, it's a great movement. And, you know, people are, you know, having this great message. It's just like, um, I just wish everyone being safe and, you know, just, you know, keep going on with the movement and just being careful with every, yeah. everything going on. I agree. And I just want to obviously send my thoughts to George Floyd, his family, everyone affected, and anyone who's watching or not watching, we just hope you're safe. We hope you're, you know, using your voice for good, staying safe out there. And, you know, we're going to get through this. It's It seems like it's going to be a little bit painful, but if we all unite and come together and use our voices, we're going to hopefully make this pl this world a better place. Definitely. Yeah. So with that, I know it's a, it's a bit of a somber note, but I want to turn it over to you, Kevin, to talk a little bit about who you are. What also anyone in the chat, if you are before I get to Kevin, I, I'm all over the place. But uh, if you, anyone's tuning in, let us know who you are, where you're tuning in from and let us know how you're doing. Throughout this, I know you know COVID is the thing still. It's very much a thing, and then you know the protests and the George Floyd unfortunate situation. But let us know how you're doing. But Kevin, I'm going to turn it over to you. Let us know. Let everyone know who you are, what you do, and what are you planning on doing today. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so, um, can you guys see my screen? We can. Perfect. Okay, so this is a little introduction, but hi, I'm Kevin Lee. I'm a product designer um, in Los Angeles, California. And um, I'm also a film photographer, so I do a lot of like very artsy um, film photography. And, you know, you can look at my work on my Instagram on top. Um, some things about me currently, so I'm based in LA. I work for Walt Disney Company. Uh, my favorite font is Matterhorn. <laughs> I love um, that. <laughs> and then it's very my... Disney esque. Is it? Re oh, you really? Oh, well, nice. isn't there I'm the glad. um? Isn't there uh, Matter? No, it's um something Horn. Uh, is it Alice in Wonderland? Uh, oh, I, think... I mean Mad 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 Hatter. I don't know. There's something. Oh, there's some Mad reference oh. in there. Nice. I mean, that's actually um, one of the... Kevin's like, things. I don't know. I have no idea. Shut up, Howard. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, that's my favorite font. And then my favorite color, we're getting very specific here, um, burnt terracotta. Ooh. Uh, that's my bedding color. Um, and then my favorite game currently is Animal Crossing. Of course. New Horizon. Yes. Of course. <laughs> I actually have um, my Switch right here, and I may or may not be playing it halfway through the stream. <laughs> it's okay. I have mine too right here. <laughs> nice. Well, so. We should just like Maybe cancel we'll... the stream and just play Animal Crossing. Oh my god, we should just live stream um, us visiting each other's island. Oh, we should do that. That would be great. <laughs> um, yeah, so that kind of bleeds into like what I'll be doing. Uh, so Animal Crossing, what is it? Um, 
it's a it's hard to explain it's more of like <laughs> you're you're this human that's like living in this deserted island filled with like all these different types of animals um sounds pretty good actually yeah right and then uh you get to like you know go fishing you know discover all these new plants look for fossils um you know look plant these flowers as you can see and you know there's these little shops like uh, there's like a tool shop or wallpaper shop for your house um, and like furniture shop. And then there's another shop specifically called Able Sisters where are they porcupines? I think they're I either think they're. porcupine or hedgehogs. Or, oh, OK. We'll One of the two. That. Um, <laughs> but they're, you know, a pair of sisters that, you know, work hard and they're, you know, they have a clothing shop where you can customize your character and Within that shop, there is this kiosk where, you know, all the users and players from around the world can customize their clothing items and upload, you know, their work on this kiosk and other players from other countries can, you know, get it and grab the code and customize the character with their design. So I think that would be like our sole focus here. Um, but yeah, it's just a quick background about Animal Crossing. And so so the chat shots. seems to, they, uh -huh. they think it's a hedgehog. So we've got Vipin and Ali and Danielle. It looks like hedgehogs. Hedgehogs. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'll, but I guess the bottom line is like they're super adorable. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ali mentioned, don't forget label. <gasps> You're right. Yeah. She visits from time to time. She needs her own shop. <laughs> she does. She really does. Yeah. She's she... out there working hard. She's working hard. And you mm -hmm. know what? I try to get as much of stuff as I can from her. So, yep. um, yeah. So I guess like all these little screenshots are like my island. I should have included my Nintendo code because I want like more people to visit. Place. <laughs> but it's it's still in construction. Um, so no judge. But yeah. Um, OK, so next slide. So what what are we designing um, the project? So it's going to be like an Animal Crossing clothing catalog app. Right now, currently, um, I'm just scrolling through like my social media feeds, and you know, one outfit or one pattern would pop up that like you know interests me. So I would save it. But I'm like, why do we have to like dig for it? Like, why can't it just be all in one app? right uh, for all these custom patterns so it's going to be like a catalog for custom patterns <coughs> and custom patterns are you know patterns that people made for like flooring for your house or like wallpapers you can yep. use um, flags or like maybe face print or face paint um, and the whole idea is to showcase the creator code that you know goes with the design or the pattern code that's quickly you know findable to on the app and then another thing is a catalog for pro designs so pro designs are different because it's specifically designs for clothing um there's a whole range of clothing in animal crossing which makes it so diverse and i love it um so there's like tops and then you know all these different categories under tops like tank tops short sleeve tees long sleeve dress shirts etc and then there's like dress up clothing um and then headwear uh, we won't be going through every single thing on the app because it's just a lot of categories. But um, yeah, we'll we'll specifically focus on tops um, at the moment. Nice. I like this because you know my my current process in Animal Crossing. It's strange that we're talking about Animal Crossing on a stream like this, but you know I'm I'm on Reddit all the time looking for interesting custom designs, whether it's flooring or clothes or whatever it might be. Then you know e either you have to scan the QR code if it's for New Leaf, or you have to go to Mabel Shop, uh, enter the creator code or the design code, and then go through that way. But it would be really cool if there was an app that you can browse maybe the top rated designs per category or just new new designs that sort of thing and just make that process a lot more streamlined. I feel like there's so many opportunities for Animal Crossing, especially when you're talking about a mobile companion app, because they do have the Nintendo Switch application, which has a few things here and there, but it, it, there's just so many things additionally you can add. You know, a few of my master classes ago, I actually did two master classes in XD, uh, creating an Animal Crossing companion app with a few fun little tidbits here and there, but there's so much you can possibly do. So I'm I'm really excited to see this get built out. 
Yeah, I'm excited too. I need to check out that masterclass too. But yeah, you do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Um, cool. So I guess the agenda for day one is to showcase a quick user flow and a low fidelity slash high fidelity overview. Um, so we'll be designing like the login, sign up screen, featured screen, custom design catalog for like the flooring and wallpaper, custom design pro catalog for the clothing. And then like ha maybe having a favorites feature where it's like easy to know like, oh, I like all these patterns. Yeah. Um, and then we'll also be building a design system uh, inspired by some colors and elements from the game. So colors, topography, um, icons, and components, which consists of like cards, text fields, buttons, etc. cetera. Um, and then for day two, we'll be actually applying the design system to the app. So like Sweet. application of the colors, images, icons, components, making it more prettier and like lively. Um, and then if we have time, uh, we can try to do some prototyping and showcase some, you know, auto animate micro interactions, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah. Totally. Yeah. And before you jump in, I want to uh -huh. say another big hello to everyone just joining. I do see Miguel. If anyone has quite and Laura as well, uh, if anyone has questions for Kevin throughout the stream about design, working for large companies, working freelance, whatever it might be, cause Kevin's done everything. Definitely throw it in the chat. I will be watching and I will ask him. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to answer all the questions. Yeah, Vipin is saying, I hope Howard is about to jump in and start designing with Kevin because it's Animal Crossing. We may switch over to my screen once and once or twice. I do want to showcase at some point the um, that trick that I, well, not, not so much a trick, the technique I used to create the Animal Crossing background a few classes ago using the Ooh. confetti plugin. So maybe at some point when Kevin starts designing, I'll switch over and do some fun stuff. Wait, please do. I just got goosebumps from that. Oh Ooh. my gosh. I'm excited. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. So I guess we should get started. Um, sure. So this is basically showcasing the sketches um, and this nice organized photo of like the user flow um this app will consist of like like i said the login sign up page featured page custom design slash pro design catalog and the favorites tab um i wanted to show this picture because it's like everything that's like in my head i just write it down you can see uh closely like there's things that i scratched off there's things that i wrote notes beside it there's you know it's just basically trying to showcase like here's all my ideas, what's working, what's not working, um, and just like your process. Nice, I, I love seeing sketches like this, especially the ones that are scratched out and crossed out. Because often, especially when you're looking at product pages on like Behance or Dribble or whatever it might be that showcase the process, you don't often see some of this stuff. You might see some sketches, but they're very glorified sketches. They're usually right. like revision number seven of a sketch but you don't see the, the X's and the scribbles. Like we all do that stuff, right? Um, right. So seeing uh -huh. some of this is really cool. And to, one question came in, Chris is saying, what is your current role, Kevin? Oh, with um, Walt Disney? Yeah, sure. Um, oh, so I am a um, interaction designer and I work under the human resources department for uh, Walt Disney Company. Um, so we do a lot of like internal software for the Disney employees and um, stuff like that. Yeah. Very cool. And also Val reminded me, thank you Val, that we're doing portfolio reviews today. So if you want your portfolio to be reviewed, hit the portfolio review tab right at the top right hand corner of Behance, behance.net slash live slash Adobe Live. And we're gonna pick two of them towards the end of the stream and review those. Oh, I love portfolio reviews because it's just like giving feedback, you know, and just seeing everyone's work. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. So, um, yeah, this is just basically a quick sketch of, you know, showcasing my user flows and yep. wireframes. Um, and now we can get started on the actual Animal Crossing uh, style guide. And I love that you um, did your presentation using Adobe XT. Right? It's just, you know, just keep everything in one app, right? Yeah. 
Um, cool. So I guess when I first start, you know, doing a style guide, it's just you can't create it before you do any low fidelity or high fidelity wireframes. It's kind of like a development process while you're slowly designing your product. Yep. So as you can see, like I got started on, you know, some low fidelity wireframes, just showing the structure and color, uh, no color or anything. Um, and then from there, I kind of like started, you know, looking at, you know, different images of the Able Sisters and, you know, the UI within the game and later applied some color so we can go on that later. But um, so what I do first is once I have all these lo-fi slash hi-fi fidelities, not all the way furnished, but like, you know, basically almost there, that's when I kind of go back and like look, apply, um, you know, apply those components and colors into the style guide because now we have like some set rules that we know that work as far as like layout and stuff like that so totally and uh, um it, you kind of reminded me of a plugin that i haven't i haven't tried this yet what i'm about to recommend you so it might go completely wrong but there's a plugin called mimic i believe it is and what it's able to do is that you can enter in a website or you can paste in a, a website URL and it pulls in some images and I believe some colors and typography that's used on the website that you brought in. And it, it could help you, you know, inspire you for the design that you're working on. I don't know if you want to try it live because I haven't done this yet specifically with the Animal Crossing website, but it might be something fun to do. Should we try it? I try, it. And try it. Yeah, while you're looking for that plugin, Jennifer is asking, how did you get that job with Disney? She wants to be, she wants so badly to work with Disney as a designer. Um, well, actually it was through like networking and also my older sister works for Disney parks. So, okay. um, you know, it was a lot of like, you know, knowing people and talking to people and, you know, getting connections and, for I'm like you know maintaining that relationship with them because I think um, working at Disney it's not just like oh my coworkers and like I have to go to work it's more of like a very inclusive and diverse family um, and that's what I you know really appreciate the company culture the most mm -hmm. um, so yeah that's that's what I that's my advice <laughs> nice so know the right people obviously you have to be a a good designer you have to be good at your craft especially for a company like disney but you also have to know people exactly mm -hmm. yeah okay so i'm on the mimic website Should i'm scared I... i'm scared kevin <laughs> let me go on animal crossing new horizons let me see we'll just do this one i guess the official website Could you imagine working for Disney too? No, cool. I can't imagine. <laughs> Seems like such a magical place. Right? It's just like so much. Okay, let's see. I'm Can sure you... it's you know a little different when you're working in an office, um, you know, not at the park, but it just seems magical. <laughs> okay, go for it. See what happens. Okay. It's doing something. So... Ooh, let me see. Oh, something's happening. Oh, okay. I saw something. You saw that, right? This I thing, did. Yeah. It, it's slowly loading in all those assets that uh, it's mentioning there. What? Wait a Whoa, minute. Oh, look at that. It worked. Our boots were instructed. Oh my gosh. What? <gasps> cool. What? And they give you like the typography. They give you the colors. Oh, I love this. Yeah. So if you're working on a, an app like this, like what Kevin's working on, using the P Mimic plugin, which thankfully it worked. Um, yeah, that could give you a little bit of a... Of course, it brought in some things that you're probably not going to need, like the stars and Mario and Luigi, but, you know, it also oh, brought I in... Love it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. This is like amazing. I wish I knew this before <laughs> the stream. <laughs> this is great. Oh my gosh. Oh my... This is... The Able sister. Let me see. What's her name? I forgot. Uh, oh, Mabel? she looks flawless. She's oh, oh, that one. Day. Yeah. Okay. Sable? Nice. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you for showing me that. That's so cool. Yeah, and anyone's who, if anyone's wondering, that was called Mimic. You can get that in the the plugins panel. 
So we do have a few additional questions. Let me scroll up. I did okay. see a few. Well, everyone's freaking out about Mimic. Uh, Chris, <laughs> Chris is also asking, how do you transfer your XD projects to production? That's a, that's a big question. I don't know if you want to take that now or you want to wait until a little bit later. Yeah, I mean, um, I guess just a quick overview is like, you know, you can share your, you know, design assets with the developers with like the share button as well. Um, yep. I think it's like share for development and then it gives them like the pixels and like the design assets. So um, that's a really cool feature, especially in XD, instead of like, you know, exporting everything in the file and then sending it to them. It's like all in this one link that it automatically does for you. Um, but yeah, we can get into that later. That's more of like the end process of the style guide, but um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it also provides CSS snippets and we are working on, actively working on additional things that just to, you know, to help bridge that gap between designers and developers. Uh, we have a question from Shay. When you create your wireframe, are your components already created? Are links wired up? That's a good question. Um, so, Yes, when I create components, it's, it's more of like kind of more like furnished, showcasing like how do I want the layout? How do I want, you know, the typography to look like? Um, not really the high fidelity stuff with like colors and imagery or illustration. I think it's having that base first and then making it a component and then applying that to like the finished product with like mm -hmm. adding colors and stuff. So yeah, I think it's definitely good to have, you know, all these different, you know, components and elements and links all together first and then creating it as a component. Yeah, and I think it also depends on your workflow, right? Some people like to keep the wireframes and the very low fidelity designs separate from everything else and they don't really like to evolve those ones. They like to design the high fidelity separately. And if that's the case, using components, I mean, it could work. You, you create low fidelity components, but if, you, if you're someone who works the other way, where you create the low fidelity wireframes and then use those designs and evolve them, you know, by adding colors and, and uh, images and things like that, then using components from the very beginning will allow you to update those components, the master component, and it'll update on all your different wireframes. So it, it, it depends on how you work, but um, you know, everyone's different, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I cannot stress this enough, like working with the style guide is like, and like all these different mm. components is so much quicker and like faster because if you wanna change one thing and you already applied it to all these different wireframes and you didn't make it into you know, a component in the assets panel, then it's like, you got to go to each, you know, wireframe and change it. It's just like too much work. So having this style guide and, you know, symbols and components like really speeds up the process. Totally. Um, but yeah, so let me, I guess we'll start with the color. Um, so what I like to do is I like to just create a separate artboard um, showcasing everything. So like for this artboard, we'll call it We'll name it colors. That works. And I know uh, Evan is asking if that Mimic plugin pulls in SVGs or just PNGs. You know, I'm not quite sure. Are any of those SVGs, Kevin? It doesn't look like they would be, but specifically the patterns, maybe at the bottom right, or any of the patterns, are those SVGs at all? Uh, let me see. I'm assuming they're not, but I could be wrong. Um, it doesn't look like it. No, I think they're all PNGs because okay. um, they're grabbing it from the website. But yeah, but still very cool. <laughs> okay, so let's see colors. So let's title this colors on the top. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna also close my Safari browser out. Less things on the window, maybe. Okay. Sweet. Nice. So we'll... we have some people testing the Mimic plugin already. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, what, what websites are they doing? 
I don't know. If you are testing the, the plugin, let us know what websites you're, as long as they're safe, let us know which websites you're working with. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Because like Nintendo had a lot of assets on their just like regular homepage. Yeah. So. Okay. So colors. So what I did was um, after creating my low fidelity wireframes, I looked at all these different images of, you know, the Able Sisters shop, um, the Able Sister characters as, as themselves. And, you know, if they go on the kiosk in the store, there's like this cool, like, millennial pink or like i don't know what to call this um <laughs> color and um i i noticed that this pink is also displayed like a lot with the pro designs and custom designs yep. pop up on the game um so i kind of want to apply that to the app just to get that user familiarity with you know um color mm -hmm. and i did that by also um so let me go back to my colors page Okay. So what I did was I literally just used the eyedrop tool on those images and grabbed those colors here. So Able Sister, I used like the blue color that, you know, she's colored that way. And then um, I'm going to use that pink that I, I dropped. I noticed that some of the pink shades in the game are like too like neon bright. Um, so I did, I, looked at like different shades that they had and this was kind of like a toned down pink and um you know more better than like that like bright pink you know yeah those like bright neon colors. colors while they're they're very nice and visually striking they're a little bit difficult to work with especially if you're focusing a lot on accessibility adding text yes. on top of them is yeah. just a nightmare oh it's crazy it's just yeah. like too much um, okay, cool. So we have our colors and then I kind of want to add like some blacks and grays. So um, I'm going to include that as well. So I have this black. We always do 27, 27, 27 for the hex. Oh, interesting. Why is that? Uh, I don't know. It's just like, it's a good like charcoal black, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, so we always go with that. Um, okay, so let's see. Oops, just happened. <laughs> Chris has to walk his dog, but the stream is too good. The nice thing about watching this on Behance is because it's being streamed through YouTube, you can always grab the, uh, the, the scrubber and just move it back a little bit. Or you can pause it and then resume when you come back. Or if you just want to rewatch the entire thing later, you can always do that as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, because mm -hmm. these are recorded too, so they could always they come are. back, right? Yep, immediately after the stream, they will be available on Behance. <gasps> nice. Um, so one thing that I like to do, uh, especially giving you know these design assets and style guide to developers is naming the colors. So like mm. this one, we'll call it navy blue. Um, and then I like showcasing the hex value, even though like, Adobe XD has that, you know, share for development. It shows all those properties. Mm -hmm. I like to have it for my sake as well. Um, just that everything's just visually there. I can quickly look at it. Right. Um, so let me copy this hex value. When you're working with developers, do they tend to use the name of the colors in addition to the hex values as well? Uh, I know that they prefer to have them named so they can like call it out. Um, okay whenever they need it. And then mm. they like apply the hex value to that name of that color. Um, Got it. But yeah. Good to know. I wish I knew more about development. <laughs> <laughs> it's but. an interesting conversation though. And I'm sure we're gonna get into this at some point because every time we have a guest on the show that talks a little bit about development, the big question comes up, You know, should designers code or should designers also be engineers? And it's a loaded question, but it's a one that I love talking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's your... good to know background knowledge of it. Yeah. Too, you know? And that's usually my answer. You know, it's, it's good to know what your developers and engineers are dealing with. That way you as a designer know what's possible and what's not possible. Because the last thing you want to do is spend 12 hours working on this beautiful looking design with all these crazy animations and you give it to your 
engineer and they just look at you like a deer in the headlights, right? And they have no idea what to do with it. You know, a lot's possible these days with uh, coding applications like Swift and uh, I don't know what the other ones exist right now, but a lot's possible, but not every engineer is going to know how to push those to its limits, right? And I learned it the hard way. Oh, no. I So I did all these things for uh, Walt Disney Studios, um, my previous job from this one, but they I like had everything perfectly done. Um, you know, designers all loved it. And then I, you know, we weren't communicating with um, the developers because we we're just like, we'll just we'll just share it with them later because like it's such an amazing idea. And when we did that, it was just like they automatically denied us. They're like, no, we can't. Like, it's not capable. Which oh no, totally makes sense. Which mm-hmm. like I totally empathize with that. Um, and. I learned it the hard way and I was like oh my god like we're in a time limit like we're there's a deadline and we eventually made the deadline but it's just like it could have been so much quicker if we just communicated and that's like the biggest lesson I learned um from that yeah it's a good lesson yeah (laughs) (laughs) um yeah so I'm still continuously just like naming these um colors and then providing the hex value so let's see well what should we name this like uh something gray um one shade of gray i don't know (laughs) um fog gray i don't know and then um we'll call this one like misty gray Mm. these are good looking colors thanks so let me put Misty Gray on this. So as I'm still like putting all this information down, um, I'm gonna, you know, add these to my color colors in the assets panel. So mm-hmm. I can just like select all these and then add click this plus button and like look, all these colors are added to my you know style guide assets panel um fancy so you added them all at once yeah because it's just like better that way (laughs) yeah and what's what's nice is if you are building a design system like this like kevin's doing right now and you're putting all these colors on a single artboard you can just select them all at once you can select the entire artboard and just poof all of a sudden add them directly to your assets. And what's what's even cooler is that the assets, at least colors and character styles in Adobe XD, work retroactively. So if you've built out your entire design in the high fidelity phase, and you want to make a change to one specific color after the fact, but you haven't been utilizing assets, you can always add that color after, after the fact, and then edit it, and it's gonna edit globally, which is cool. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And like, I kind of made it. It's funny. Evan says giving colors names makes them a lot easier to refer to versus saying, what if we made this part 272727? Oh my gosh. That would be like, that would be like, what? You would have to memorize the whole like hex value. Like, oh, like, I I know what you're saying. Yeah. I wonder what these numbers mean. Because like, I didn't look into that, but like, if anyone knows if there's like a certain like pattern with like how hex uses their hex numbers like please let me know because like you know that's that's an interesting question i know that zeros are black f's are are white everything (laughs) in between i have zero idea i should probably yeah if someone knows or has a good reference for that throw it in the chat right and like is there a z in anything or is it just a through f i wonder i don't know hey justin welcome and thanks for the kind words chris and vipin Okay, so after we got our colors situated, um, we're gonna go into typography. So, you know, having all this low fidelity, high fidelity wireframes, like kind of structured out, um, you can really start taking out things. So I did that with um, this right here. So I took out like, okay, the search, customize and explore patterns text. And I took out like this featured header, um, this, you know, 
this header as well and then maybe like have some body text somewhere so i grab this um just grabbing all these different you know text elements from you know your low fi's uh really shows like okay a good hierarchy of like typography mm -hmm. um and then another thing was oh i grabbed the buttons button text so after i looked through everything and like look through all the typography um you want to make sure you grab all of them by the way uh, then that's when you can start naming them so like okay the biggest one is matterhorn 30 black um and um you can also showcase the character spacing as well but that's like getting really technical with it yeah and um, where's matterhorn from matterhorn where is that typeface from you know i i honestly like just knew about it because i worked a lot with it with disney and i oh, love okay. like sans serif so i'm just like this is my next like favorite font nice if it was um, me it would be sophia pro and I think people in the chat who watch my streams know that I'm on a Sophia Pro kick lately. It used to be Poppins, now I moved on to Sophia, and maybe it'll be Matterhorn next. I don't know. It looks like a pretty cool typeface. Right? Uh, but like also Papyrus? I'm just kidding. Kevin, okay, how do I kick Kevin from the stream? <laughs> Bye, guys. Great, <laughs> great live stream. Um, All right, I'm kicking Kevin right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. Um, there we go. Yeah. Kevin's gone. I'm, it's just I'm, me now. I disappeared. I, how do I turn off my camera? I'll put there it back. Go, there we go. Um, You're back. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So I basically grabbed each thing and I named it like header one over here, header two mm -hmm. for this one, um, header three for, you know, another option, body text, and then the button text. So what I want to do is I want to grab all this information here. And do these headers have specific sizes for mobile and, and web? Do you work with very specific sizes or is it does it differ from project to project? So, you know, I heard that like the smallest size for like web that you should be using is like 12 or mm -hmm. like 14. But like for me, I use like 16. <laughs> um, and for mobile apps, I use 16 as well because it's just like, it's just a good readable size, um, access, especially for like accessibility. Like 12 font is still like really tiny. Like if you look at this like username text, it's like really small. Yeah. Like, compared to the 16 size button. Yeah. But if you want to emphasize the login button, like that's what you would. That, but. Totally. And uh, Shay posted uh, monotype. Corsivi, Cors, Corsiva? I haven't heard of that one, but I would love to hear what all of your favorite typefaces are. And if anyone says Comic Sans or Papyrus, Val, I give you permission to give them the boot. Automatic kick. But not really, don't do that. Um, <laughs> Chris is asking, what's the best system for XD? Mac, Windows, and what specification? That's an interesting question. I have... I've mainly used XD on the Mac. I'm using an iMac Pro right now, which is probably overkill for XD, but for streaming, it's, it definitely helps. Um, I also use it on the Windows Surface laptops, which it works great with. But I don't know if there's, I mean, it's, it's a fairly low intensity application, so it's not gonna really run your system down. I know that the team is working a lot on performance, and I think they're testing and or, even don't quote me on this, but they might even be slowly rolling out support for metal on Mac OS, which will help with performance even more. But the team is very committed to performance. So, uh, you know, hopefully it works on uh, both platforms really nicely. Are you a Windows or Mac per guy? I'm mostly Mac. Yeah, I just be, I've been using it. Nothing against Windows, especially the latest versions of Windows. You know, back in the XP um, and what was the other one? Windows 10, I think. Those were a bit rough. But in recent years, Windows has been fantastic. But I've just been using Mac for so long that it's okay. just something I continue doing. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll give it a chance. You know, I'll I haven't done it like done Windows or Androids in a long time, so like I'll. I'll give it a try. I'll yeah, I know. Out. Yeah, Peter Daltondo actually made the switch from Mac to Windows, and he 
he's been loving it so far. Oh, really? Like, what's some like cool things about it? I think um, for him, he games a lot and he does a lot of high intensity. Uh, uses a lot of high intensity applications. He streams a lot as well. So for those sorts of things, it's very good with heavy resources. And of course you can upgrade it. Like my iMac Pro right now, I can't even upgrade the memory inside of it, which is incredibly frustrating. That's something you've been traditionally have been able to do. But on Windows machines that you build yourself, you can pretty much upgrade everything. So if you're into upgrading and customizing your PCs, then I would say Windows is probably the direction you want to take. I, yeah, because I know like Mac is like really bad for like gaming. And like lately within this like quarantine, I've been into gaming. Mm -hmm. That's why this Animal Crossing app. So yeah, I've been like thinking like, oh, should I like, go windows for this but yeah 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 thankfully the the games that i play mostly blizzard games all run pretty well on the mac but anything other than that like if you want to play call of duty or any of those first person shooters you're probably even overwatch is not available on the mac um, because of the the system it's built on oh is overwatch um a fun game i used to play it a lot until i got until i had a child and then <laughs> all downhill from there you're like no more gaming you can still game when you um have a kid i gotta yeah i gotta find time that's true so we have I mean, let's it's see so easy for me to say without having a kid but yeah that's true yeah so <laughs> michelle is big into playfair display and sophia pro we've oh, got ristretto from newer and justin says molten and cleon i haven't heard of half of these uh, what else do we have? Val says, what if I choose Comic Sans or Papyrus? Well, you can kick yourself, Val. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice Hobo, knowing you. Wingdings. Um, yeah. Wingdings. What is, is that even like, that's like symbols, right? It is, yeah. It, it, there's also Webdings, I think, which, which is the newer version of Wingdings, which is web compatible strange oh that's so interesting yeah huh all right okay. back to you what, what what are you up to kevin yeah so um right now i'm just writing all the properties again this is all it could be displayed in the share for development but yep. having that visual representation for yourself is always good um so what i'm gonna do is i wrote down all the titles for the typography so like header one header two three body button mm -hmm. and then the font family as well as like the weight so like matterhorn black matterhorn bold matterhorn semi bold as well as the point size yep um just to have all those properties and then what i like to do is also showcase a quick like um template or representation of how the text works so like i'll grab this header one and then I'll maybe add like um, this like header or subhead for this one and put it here um, just to have a visual representation. I think it's good to have visual representation because um, if you're going at Disney, we do a lot of like sharing our style guides with each other. Right. So it showcases how our typography works, um, you know, in multiple different ways. So um, we could have like this to see like click. I'd be curious, I, I'm sure you can't show any of it, but I'd be curious to see what Disney's style guides look like. I bet they're very pretty. Uh, yeah, they're very pretty and very magical um, and super, super complex. Like, oh boy there's so many different components that like um it's just it's just everywhere mm. chris but is it, asking it, can you build adobe xd for ipad in adobe xd that'd be fun i um talon talon wadsworth has done a few streams where he's created and designed additional features for adobe xd inside of adobe xd because you know xd is designed in xd so it's it's a yeah. lot of inception stuff going on oh i love that oh my yeah gosh. It's, a, it's an I interesting in question, though. Oh, you, you might have been. I think you were, possibly. Yeah. 
you know, back in San Francisco when we can actually physically interact with people. I know. Um, <laughs> one day we'll, we'll get back to the studio. But it's an interesting question that Chris brings up, you know, Adobe XD for the iPad. Is that, because we, we hear from time to time, I want Adobe XD for the iPad, right? And it, it seems to me it's, it's a smaller group of people who would actually use it consistently. You know, for me, I, you know, I, I've used Sidecar on my, my iPad connected to my Mac to use Adobe XD. And I know it's not the same. It's a, it has a few limitations, but I personally don't see myself sitting down for long periods of time, you know, hours on my iPad designing. But of course, you know, depending on assuming, you know, there is an iPad version of Adobe XD, which I don't believe there is in the works, but assuming there would be, the experience might be a little bit different, but I don't know. I don't see myself doing it. What is, what was that application you're talking about um, to use with uh, XD? Oh, Sidecar. Oh yeah, what is that? Yeah, like, so it's, it's part of Mac OS Catalina, I believe it is, and it allows you to use your iPad as a secondary display. And I'm actually using it right now to display your video feed. So I can pull that into Wirecast, but you can also use that to, you know, put an application like Adobe XD on there, and you can use your Apple Pencil to navigate um, and interact with it, which is interesting. It's wow. it's not perfect, but it it works in some situations. Wow, hmm. nice, very cool. Um, okay, so I guess uh, I'm gonna do the same thing with the uh, character style. So I'll like grab all this and then click this plus button and it's right here and I love it nice <laughs> so fast um, okay so now since we got the colors and I have an interesting question now, Kevin yes? sorry to interrupt I'm just doing oh. my own user research research for the team um, okay. I'm just thinking out loud I don't know if this is something that they're actually thinking about or maybe it is I don't know but as I'm watching designers design I try to think of ideas on how to make their design and their life a little bit easier. So inside of your style guide, in your typography section, you went through and you, you, you know, created the different typography, the different sizes and everything. You named them on the canvas. You named it header one, header two, header three, whatever. You grabbed all of those. You added them directly to your character style section within your assets panel, right? Uh -huh. And it initially, by default, it names it Matterhorn 36, Matterhorn whatever. Uh huh. What, do, yep. Is that how you prefer it, or would you want it to say like header one, or header? Would you want it to reflect what you've typed on the canvas? You know, it would be great to like. I mean, you could also edit it as well, right? Well, of course, yeah, yeah. Um, but like you're saying, like when you automatically do it, like the yeah. What thing. What would you want for the default when you add a character style to your assets panel? You know, I think it's good to have it automatically have like header one, header two, header three, because it's like you just automatically know by looking at it. Right. Because now that like I would have to like double click and rename all these again. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if it was the automatic, you know, detection of it, like that would be great. Like if they knew like, oh, I the first like few characters that I put like pop up there, like that would be quick. Fast, yeah but mm -hmm. or i wonder if maybe like a visual tag would also be nice so if it it can still say matter matterhorn i don't know why i have so much trouble with that word but it could still say matterhorn 36 but maybe all the way to the far right there might be like a visual h1 tag kind of like justin is mentioning <gasps> that would be really cool like maybe just having an h1 h2 because you could have both I yeah mean, i'm gonna switch over to my screen just for a second Okay. Where's my screen? Here's my screen. Is this my screen? No, that's the schedule. There's my Should screen. Should I stop sharing mine? Or... No, you're good. You're good. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to brainstorm here because I don't know. That's what I do. Um, header. So we've got header here. And I'm going to go with Sophia Pro because I'm having withdrawals right now. So I have to go for some Sophia. Okay. <laughs> and you probably can't see this, Kevin. So um, I apologize. I'll try to explain it as best I can. So. You know, by default, when you go to your assets panel, you press the plus button beside character styles, it adds it right here, right? So you've got your preview on the left, you've got Sophia Pro 56. Um, so I can definitely see both ways, right? So if it, if I have this called header 
and it uses that as the default naming convention. Some people might say, well, I want to see the actual name of the typeface and the size right. by default. So I can totally see that. So what I think could be cool is let me actually go ahead. I'm just going to just to make this just make my life a little bit easier. I'm just going to screenshot this. Okay. And you know, if on your canvas you have like header one or H1, maybe Adobe XD can detect that. And then over to the right in your assets panel, it would just add like a little H1 tag over here automatically, just like that. Just so you can visually identify which is your H1, which is your H2 and things like that. I don't know, I'm just brainstorming. Um, this is not an indication of things that might be in the works, but just thought it would be an interesting idea. And that's what I love about like, especially this show, like everyone has all these ideas that, you know, will maybe potentially, you know, become live, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. You never know. Let me know in the chat if that's something you would like to see in XD, because I know the team is, there's a lot of talk and focus on assets and components and working better together with your teams. So let us know if this is something, it's a very small feature, I would imagine, but I don't know, maybe it can go a long way. For sure, mm. I agree. Cool. And I was looking through like with my phone, like what you're doing and I'm like, oh, that's a good, I like that. <laughs> oh yes. Um, okay, so we have our colors, typography, and then now we could get into the components. So um, what I like to do is I like to, again, go through like all my apps and stuff. So we'll start with like um, the navigation or sorry, the icons. Mm -hmm. So let me title this icons. Oops. This. So all <laughs> newer, icons... newer said um, new feature coming out teasing. No, that was that was not a tease. That was just me brainstorming. Um, we do have an update coming out in in June. And we were going to, I'm sure I can say this, I don't know. We were we were going to tease out one of the new features on today's show, and we we're also going to tease one out on social, but the team decided that it's probably not the right time to start getting, you know, hyping things up. We're gonna we're gonna wait a little bit. But we do have some really fun features coming out in June, which is this month. It's June already. Oh my god, time flies so fast. It does, doesn't it? Especially when you're like home. You're just yeah. like, oh my god. I haven't left my house in a million years. Uh, uh, have you been going on walks and stuff? or? Not really. I mean, we've gone to the grocery store and back when we need to pick up groceries. That's exciting. But <laughs> so exciting. But yeah. that's about it. You know, I bought a bike, so I'm on the bike from time to time. Like indoors, it's an indoor bike, but... Yeah, I, oh. I just don't, I should probably get outside because I my vitamin D level is probably just deple depleted completely. Oh my God. You know what I miss? I miss getting a tan. Oh, uh, yeah. They they just opened the beaches right like not too long ago, but yeah. Uh, um, okay, so right now what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing all these icons. Um, that I have here. So let me see. Um, okay. Oh, this heart icon. Oh yeah, and as Val mentioned, we have about 30 minutes until portfolio review, so make sure to submit them. Oh, wow. That was fast, oh my gosh. I know, an hour hasn't gone by already. Really? Whoa, mm -hmm. okay, nice. Um, okay, so I have all these icons. Oops, let me grab out of this. There we go. Okay. Maybe I should have these hearts next to each other because it's good to show different states. So like there's like um, an active state and a D, uh, an active state and an active state for this heart. Yep. Um, okay. And you, and you typically, when you're designing your components in your states, it looks like you typically put them put the two states beside each other and visually show them both. 
Yeah. Okay. Because it's just a pair. You know what I mean? Like super quick. Um, and then what I like to do is also like name um, my icons. Mm. Oh, like, Justin's like, asking, can you show how to pull those icons into Illustrator from XD? How to pull the icons into Illustrator from XD. Oh, okay. So I believe you could just copy and paste it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of different ways. So if you're going from XD to Illustrator, I believe you can just copy and paste it. You can upload it to your Creative Cloud libraries. Under the file menu, you can access your, your library from there. That way, if you do design in both applications back and forth, everything will remain up to date. If you're going the other way, same thing. You can copy and paste, upload to the Creative Cloud, or you can also save your Illustrator file and open up the entire thing in Adobe XD. A lot of different ways you can do it. Yeah, I love how like, since it's all Adobe, like everything's just copy and paste like super quickly. Um, yeah. Yeah, I love that everything is intertwined. Even After Effects works with XD. You can just take your whole XD file and export it to After Effects if you need very advanced prototyping capabilities. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Chris is also asking, can you add equivalent of an iframe into XD to display content from a live service? Uh, you can't. Um, I, I believe it's probably security reasons. Possibly, I'm not 100% sure. I know that things like being able to scroll within a specific area of your prototype is something that the team is working on, but just actually pulling in information from a live service is probably probably not going to see that anytime soon. I and mean, there's probably definitely security concerns around that, but I'm not sure if that's on the roadmap or not. Okay. So I'm just naming all these SVG icons. Um, oh, it's interesting. So you display the name of the icons underneath the actual icons. Yeah. Um, I just love having visual indications of stuff. Um, but again, like Adobe share option for developers does all this. Um, mm -hmm. But is this for, for your personal uh, pleasure or preference, or is this to help your developers as well? I think it's a little bit of both, because it's like, if you need like a visual indication of something really quick, you know that like this quick style guide like has all the information. Yep. Um, if like, I don't know, you have a lot of windows up, or like if you just want to focus, have all your information in one page, like it's all displayed here so let's um oops let me put let's rename this like um unactive broken heart i don't know do you know the <laughs> um do you know the the easter egg to add a heart in xd what's the easter egg <gasps> you don't know kevin can you show me on your oh screen? my okay i'm gonna guide you through this Oh, okay. okay. Okay, so go ahead and grab your polygon tool. Grab my what? Polygon tool. Okay. And draw out a polygon anywhere you want. Okay. All right, now, inside of your properties inspector, you know where you control the number of sides? Right now it's three sides. Okay, yes. Go ahead and as, you, as if you're typing like a little heart, like less than three, and press return. What? What? Oh my gosh, I love it. I love seeing people's reactions when they do that. It's a heart. It's a heart. Oh my gosh, I love this. And then you could change like, oh, hello. Hello. I love this. I'm gonna use this one. Mm -hmm. And in that same field, if you type the word dark mode, nothing happens. Wait, what do you mean? I'm just messing with the chat because oh. everyone wants dark mode in Adobe XD. Oh, okay. I'm like, wouldn't that wait. be wild if there was like a hidden Easter egg to activate dark mode and we just didn't tell anybody? That would be insane. I would love that. Do you like dark mode? 
I do like dark mode. Um, especially when I'm designing at night and it's like 12 o'clock at night, midnight, and uh-huh. I don't want to blind myself or anyone else that might be in the room. I like it, especially, you know, photo- when Photoshop released dark mode many, many moons ago, I just could not go back. I know it's a personal preference. Some people hate it. Some people love it. And right. I think it's fair to say that people on the team want to be able to offer dark mode to Adobe XD users. It's just not one of those features that it, it's very difficult to prioritize something like that because it's not a feature that's going to really help designers design better. I mean, it sort of will if you think about it, right. but it, it's so difficult to prioritize that. At Disney, we call those things a good to have. Yes, I like, like it's that. Something you, it's good to have, but it's not like the main priority for it. Yeah. That's Everyone's what, like, angry a lot at me. Of time <laughs> to do it. Um, I am trolling. Okay, so I have all these parts. Okay, nicely organized. Um, grab all this information. Put it as a component. Oops, actually. Oh, so that's interesting. You have to make you have to click it separately. For each yeah, because if you select multiple objects, and you add, um, you press the plus button, it will create one component of those objects. Now, it would be kind of cool if you can add in a shortcut, for example, like if you hold down shift or alt or control or whatever it might be, and then you press the plus button, maybe that would tell Adobe XD to add all the different objects separately. That would be kind of cool. Um, again, be, not yeah. something that I'm teasing, just something that I'm brainstorming out loud. I mean, I like that idea. I think Adobe should get on that. Adobe should <laughs> do that. I'm sure some of the product managers or developers are watching right now. So do that. <laughs> and yes, I like Chris's idea. <laughs> if you type, yeah, I like Chris's idea. If you type Pinsky inside of the, the form field, it makes uh-huh. everything pink and the default font turns to Sophia Pro. Oh my God. <laughs> that would be amazing. Ugh. And then for, if you type in Kevin, it'll just be everything Animal Crossing. Yes. Should do oh, that. And there should be a boot trigger me. newer. I like that as well. Yes, oh, I love that. So I want to go over these quick names that I did. So like home, obviously home, custom des, and that's like short for custom design. Pro des is like pro design. Yep. Um, and the reason why I did this, and they're kind of similar, is because if you look at the actual game, um, it's a pencil and then a pencil with sparkles. So let me go to my images. I think everything should have sparkles. Right, Disney icons, there's like sparkles everywhere for every icon. Um, so I kind of like embodied something to showcase that user familiarity with the game, with mm. you know the actual app, so they yep. know what the difference is. Um, so I did that with my icons here. And then having a filter icon is always good, profile icon. We won't work on the profile page because that's just a whole other feature. Um, and then the favorites buttons right here, the active and unactive states. Um, so from there, since we have all the icons done, we can look at the dividers within the app. So dividers are more of like just simple lines um, that divide the you know information. So let me, and for these, I don't really give them a name. It's just like all in one category mm-hmm. because it's, um, Oops, what did I just do? No, I don't want that. Okay. Michelle is saying it'd be great if we can scroll through the fonts and see the selected text change, like Photoshop and Illustrator. I would love that. And I know the XD team does work fairly closely with the type team at Adobe. And I think mm-hmm. they're either working on or they're they're trying to prioritize additional improvements to typography in Adobe XD and that would be a, a fantastic addition. Yes, I agree. Just things to like get everything, you know, easier, right? Yeah, For of everybody. course. It's all about priorities. Try to fit that in. <laughs> we got some really cool stuff that we're working on and some stuff is about to be released in June at some point. But oh, um, can you hint stuff out or is that confidential? Not yet. Maybe Possibly during my master class on Friday, but okay. we're, we're being very careful with everything happening in the world right now. The last thing we want to do is make a big splash on social media um, 
in the mix of everything going on. So we want to be very careful with some of it. Um, there's an opportunity that I might be able to kind of just slide something in during my master class on Friday. We'll see how things go, but I will keep you all up to date on Twitter. And if I hear anything t before tomorrow during our stream, I will I'll, I'll let you know as well. That would be great. Yep. Okay. Um, I know I said I wasn't going to name it, but I think it's better to name it. <laughs> Because you know the difference between a short line and a long line. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, so I, let me, I have all my buttons um, as well. So I have my primary button right here that I'm grabbing, yep. my secondary button. It's just like, it's interesting because it's like you're deconstructing everything, right? It's like, for me, it's kind of fun where. It's like you have all these things that you created and like you're deconstructing everything. Um, yeah. Uh, so Do you ever go the opposite way though, where you create your components and your st your colors and your character styles first, and then you use those to create the low fidelity wireframes? Yeah, you know, it's for me, it's like I have to visually see something first and then kind of just go back. But mm -hmm. I, just, I know what you mean. like creating all these things and then applying it um like after i did it but i just think like what if i need to like change something or like maybe it doesn't look out didn't look good than like i expected but i mean i know people work that way as well um but yeah i think for me to work quicker and faster personally it's just like let me just design something like not the whole product but like few screens and then let me work around it and then from yep. there I can make it into like a high fidelity totally yeah and Shay is asking anyone know what's in the latest update of Adobe XD so you might be talking about the small update that was released last night slash this morning that was all bug fixes I believe the the big June update is coming at some point in June can't tell you I don't know if I can tell you when probably not um, but yeah, there, there is a page somewhere that outlines smaller updates like bug fixes and things like that. Um, if I can find it, I'll pop it in the chat or if someone beats me to it. Hey, Andrew, welcome. Very cool. Um, but where is everyone from like in our chat? Cause I know like since everyone's in quarantine and stuff like that, like there's a lot more people. <laughs> yeah, there's there's quite a few in. people in here. Yeah, I would love to know if you are. I know a lot of people are tuning in on YouTube right now. If you do want to chat along, head over to oh. behance.net slash Adobe Live. You'll be able to chat there. Um, I don't have the YouTube chat open up, so definitely hop over to Behance. And as Kevin said, love to know where you're tuning in from right now. Yes. That's what I love about this show. It's like everywhere around the world. Yeah. And some people, you know, when we um, when we stream around twelve o'clock or one o'clock, it's I think in India it's one in the morning or something like that. And there's yeah. there's people just watching at one, two, three in the morning. I'm passed out at that time. I don't know how people stay awake. <laughs> when I was like seventeen, eighteen, sure right. I did that, but ugh, I can't do that. I'm by nine o'clock. I'm in bed. By ten o'clock, I'm probably asleep. really nine. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah, I go I mean, to. That's um, really good. That's like <laughs> you're getting a lot of sleep. But yeah, I hop on the bike at like eight for about half an hour or so, and then I'm just done. Wow, I'm a total night owl. I'm just like I. I feel like I'm more creative at night. I don't know if that's just me, but. No, I get that too. You know, if I'm if I'm on my laptop in bed, I'm usually designing or I'm playing Animal Crossing, but. Um, yeah, I, I definitely, some of my, my best ideas come at night when I'm just designing. Yeah. Oh, gosh, we have so many. Okay, hold on. Oh, cool. so Chris, I guess, grabbed his phone, and now he's walking his dog watching our stream. This is this is amazing. This could be a first. Yeah. So we've got Thor from the Netherlands. Shay from a Toronto suburb. Hey, Toronto. I grew up not too long, not too far from Toronto uh, in one of the the cities outside of Toronto. Um, oh, you're from Canada, right? I am from Canada. Oh, nice. Yeah, we've got Julia how from Germany. Like over there? Um, how is it like over there? So, 
<laughs> it, it's sad that I have to ask what you're referring to. <laughs> like, how is the living in Canada? Like, oh, okay. Uh, I thought you were talking about one of the one of the current situations. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, living in Canada was fantastic. I wish I could go back. I mean, I can go back, but it would be a hassle with work and all that stuff. You know, buying a house and you know, so on and so forth. But yeah, I loved Canada. It was such a peaceful place. Uh, I, I one day maybe I'll go back. Um, and I would love to visit. I have cousins in Toronto, so it's just... Mm. You should totally beautiful. go. It's a, not in the winter, though. If you've never been, don't go in the winter. No. Unless... No, don't. Because you're you're not from... You're not familiar with snow or very cold weather, are you? Actually, mm -mm, I'm from Chicago. Oh, are you? So... I thought you were from L.A. Oh, no. You're just I living there. I was. Okay. Uh, not, yeah, I live here. Okay, but, so um... you you know snow. I'm used to it. But you probably but, want to avoid it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And the human weather. Oh, in the summer yeah. times. Oof. Yeah. Jenny from um, Brazil. Who oh, else do we Brazil. have? Santa Cruz. Hey, I love Santa Cruz. Oh, Los oh, Tia from Los Angeles. And uh, Maryland. Whitby, Ontario. I spent a lot of time in Whitby. Japan. Hey. Miami. Riverside. Wow. Duval. Brazil. Canada, Nashville, Minneapolis. Wow. That's awesome. So it's great to see people from all over the world. Hopefully you're all staying safe. Mm -hmm. Stay safe and stay indoors and mm -hmm. you know, just be careful. Yep. Okay. So what I did was I'm grabbing all these banners and cards um, and making them components. Um, so like all these are like supposed to be images. This is the heart icon. If you can zoom in a little bit so we can see what you're working oh, with. Yeah. Can you see better? Yep. That's better. Um, I might add a drop shadow actually. Mm, to... One of my favorite subjects to talk about. Really? Uh-huh. <laughs> why? Why? What's your drop? Ooh, excuse me. I'm getting all choked up talking about drop shadows. Drop <laughs> shadows are so tricky to work with. And I notice a lot because I, I host the daily challenges, which is geared at beginner designers. And whenever I can, I try to give this feedback. Is, you know, often I see drop shadows. Actually, you know what? This calls for a switch over to my screen. Okay. Bloop. Here we go. Okay. So. <laughs> Jennifer says, oh no, the drop shadow argument. Yes. Oh so, no, what did I stir up? It, it, okay. No, it, it's a good, it's a good, um, Jay says, here we go. <laughs> oh boy, people know what's coming. It's a good they, learning they opportunity. <laughs> they do. So I often see the following, you know, you've got this shape here and the idea of a drop shadow is to separate one element from the background. So in this case, it would be to separate this gray box with, which is, fairly on the lighter side from this light background. And that's great and all, but I often see people select a drop shadow and they'll, you know, maybe they'll increase the Y value a little bit and then they'll take the opacity and go like that. And, and I'll also see some early designers and this isn't like ripping on beginner designers because we've all been through this. I used, I used to do this too, right? Hopefully this is totally. acting as a learning opportunity. Um, I also see this happen on text. You should almost never add drop shadows to text. Just don't do it. If you have oh. to separate the text from the background, <laughs> Kevin, <laughs> do you have something to say? Are you, do you do this? Oh my God. I, um, when, I feel like when <laughs> you I was had that just look around, I was just like, wait like i i thought that was like the coolest thing when i was young but i'm like looking back i'm just like what was i thinking like uh, yeah. yeah like there's ways to if you want to get like do those like very sharp almost like comic style t uh, drop shadows which are almost not shadows but you know, that's almost acceptable but if you just add a regular shadow to text ugh. so yeah this is what i see a lot right you should probably avoid this because this is just it burns your eyes so what I typically like to do, if I'm going to add a, a shadow, 
uh-huh. is <laughs> Chris is saying Howard should have an an emoji pre recording of this. Yeah, I probably should. Whenever whenever someone talks about drop shadow, I just press the shadow button on my stream deck and it just runs through the whole thing. Um, oh really? Yeah. So what I usually like to do, you know, the Y value will differ from project to project, shape to shape, screen to screen. But one thing I do is I blur, I bump up the blur quite a bit. I don't know if there's, I know Apple, I think, uses double the value. So if they're doing, let's say, 10 for the the Y axis, they'll do 20 for the blur. I don't know, I don't have a preference for that. But the, the most important thing after you've bumped up the blur is just grab the opacity and just drop it down. Now, in this yeah. case, I would probably, you know, bump this up a little bit more, the Y value, but the opacity, lower it. And this, maybe let's round this so it looks a little bit better. Now, this What's isn't- What's values, the X, Y, and B? I wanna try. Uh, right now it's at 20 and 26, and then the opacity is around 18. I would probably go even lower than that. Again, very, very subtle, anywhere between like five and 20% at the most. And this oh, one wait, is kind of a little bit muddy right now. Is, sorry, your X value is 20? Uh, y value is 20. X I'm not touching. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I tried it and I'm like, wait, what? what? Oh. <laughs> and this is obviously going to change based on whatever's inside of this shape. You know, if there's an image in the shape or the, the color is a little bit lighter, for example, then you're probably going to want to change those values a little bit. But it's a much more, and this I would probably even tweak uh, further but it's a much more pleasing drop shadow to look at compared to the one here on the left, which is just burning my eyes. And it's still kind of, again, I would tweak it a little bit, but it still helps separate that shape from the background. So yeah, shadows, I'm probably gonna make a video on working with shadows, just because I I talk about this a lot and I should probably keep that message going, but yeah, be careful with your shadows. I'm, I'm gonna try it out. I did Y20, um, B26, and then I put um, the opacity value to like really low. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know if you can see my screen. Yep. But like seven, I'm gonna try that. Yeah. Okay, and then I'll just apply this here. I would love to see a masterclass on that. That would be interesting. <laughs> Just on shadows? Yeah. Cause it's I do actually, talk it's, about it. Yeah, I do talk about shadows a lot during my masterclasses, but haven't done one specifically, but maybe I will. Oh no, now they're talking about GIF versus GIF. I, everyone's gonna like hate me, but I say GIF. Oh no, you, you and Shay. <laughs> Like I get the um, peanut butter argument, like just peanut butter, but like, I don't know. It's just, it's just, it resonates me since like a kid. I always say Jif, like, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely on the GIF bandwagon. Right. And my wife says Jif, so it's like. Oh, she does? Okay. She does, yeah. So. That's awesome. It, it proves that people side. people with two very differ, differing views can live happily together. <laughs> right. But you know what? She's right. So. Oh. All right. Yeah. Time to kick Kevin again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I thought we were getting along, but I don't think this will work out. This is where our friendship okay. ends. This is, yeah, it's done. Um, oh, gosh. Let's see. Uh, okay, so let me. So I just fixed those drop shadow. Thank you. Um, and I'm gonna. I wasn't grinding on your drop shadows. I was just talking in general. Oh no! Yeah, totally. <laughs> and we do have but ten actually, minutes left like, until portfolio okay. reviews. By the way. Oh, ten minutes left. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so just wrapping this up, I guess, really quickly. Um, so this is a catalog card. So it shows the item place, shows the pattern name of it and the creator's name underneath and a heart to have them the ability to favorite it. Yep. And then once they click on this, then it takes them to this page where it's like a profile view, profile card view. Yep. So it shows the pattern name as well as the pattern code associated to it. And then the creator's name as well as their creator code um, 
So there's like a MO code and a MA code, um, depending on if you were looking for a specific item or let's say like Gucci had something like then you could look up a Gucci code um, specifically for all Gucci items. But that would um, be fancy. Yeah, I know. Oh mm. my gosh, it'd be what if all these like high name brands are like not even high name brands, like just like, I don't know. Marshalls or like Target, like had an Animal Crossing catalog. Oh my clothing. gosh. You know, if this wasn't Nintendo that we were talking about, I can see certain companies partnering with like Gucci and all these other brands and having sponsored creator designs inside of the app and just like bombarding people with advertisements. But thankfully, Nintendo doesn't typically go down that route, but I can see that happening. I know. Um, they're just like, we're doing our own thing and yep. it's going good. Mm -hmm. but... We have another argument in the chat, by the way. Oh, so, <laughs> Kevin, are you on the pineapple on pizza bandwagon? Yes. Yes. Okay. We're, we're friends so again. Good. It is. It's like yeah. sweet and savory and it's just, mm. You feel like you're in Hawaii when you eat it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Why? There's good. people that don't like it. It's there are lots of there's it, this is like pineapple on pizza is is like politics there are people who absolutely <laughs> love it and people who absolutely hate it there's like no in between really? i don't think yeah <gasps> i love it i don't know if we can be friends if like you're not a pineapple and um yeah and lover on pizza. when this when this quarantine thing is all over we're gonna have some pineapple on pizza yes oh my gosh i would love that that sounds so good honestly Val says, "Oh, that's right. Val hates it. Val, Val's on the uh, the wrong side no, of history." No, Val, here. is this Voodoo Val? This is Val. Yeah. Ah, uh, no, Val. I was rooting for you. She said she's gonna kick herself. No. Oh my gosh. Ah. Uh, oh boy. Oh my god. Val's amazing. I was like, I I was hoping. Is she on the GIF side? Oh, I don't know. I I I would have to scroll back up and check. Not like I'm doing anything else. Hold on, let me scroll back and up and check. <laughs> it's literally your only job, Howard. Look at the chat. Look at the chat. Um, okay, let's see. What should I name this? Like, pro... Um, I think she's on my side with the uh, gif. No! Oh my gosh. I feel so betrayed. Um, it's okay, though. <laughs> Pops card. Now I was hoping we would have the same um, opinions on our pizza and the name that we put for gifs. Gifs. Um, <laughs> okay. So let's see. Okay. Cool. So I, right now, going back to my work, I. No, I hold on, hold on, Kevin. Let's not. Let's not go yeah. back to. We're gonna get. You're gonna get nothing done because we're just talking about controversial things here. Um, okay. Menashe is saying, since you're a Chicago guy, you're deep right. dish or New York style pizza? Oh, deep dish. Okay. Are you kidding me? Like, is that even a question? What? Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I need to go on a wrap. Oh Santa boy. Crust is like literally a saltine cracker with like tomato sauce and cheese on top of it. Like, it's not even... It's not even a pizza. At least deep dish is like, it's hearty. It's like, it's thick with two C's. And, you know, it's filled with cheese and so much flavor. A thin crust pizza is like some bland stuff. Is all I got to say. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't, uh -huh. I kind of get the, the, uh, the direction that you were going with this. And if we, if we weren't <laughs> streaming live, this would have been a lot more controversial oh, i would have gone off i would have gone off like no filter like but yeah like no deep dish is like all the way all right and i love the now i'm getting hungry i love the <laughs> um oh my god what is it the spinach and ricotta um uh deep dish it's like oh it's so good mm. i miss it i miss chicago do you miss have pizza tonight I do miss Canada. Yeah, we didn't, we were really, we, just, I don't know. There wasn't really any food in Canada that I, I liked specifically. You but, guys have maple stuff. 
right? We do have maple right. things, but you can buy that mostly in the United States. We did have poutine. <laughs> I hated poutine. It's just... <gasps> what? I love poutine. Oh, what? no, Kevin. Just oh drenched God, in cheese, gravy. Cheese curds. I got... Okay, so when I went to school in San Diego, I saw this thing where it was like french fries with gravy with like these cheese curds i'm like what is this a poutine like i've never heard of it Mm -hmm. and i ordered it and it was just like a whole new world i was in um aladdin a whole new world (laughs) i was like oh my gosh it was so good how do you not like that the flavors just mesh perfectly i hate gravy what oh no no that's oh i love gravy Maybe it's a Midwest thing. I don't know. Maybe. We are getting very sidetracked. Uh, I do in very small portions. I don't like, like, obviously I'm not going to eat it from a jar, but if I'm like putting on my burger, for example, (laughs) it's, adds a nice little taste. Okay. Everyone's going to think I'm crazy, but I sometimes like grab a spoon. Oh no, don't do it. And then like with any condiments, like ketchup, barbecue, mustard, Uh, mayonnaise and like if I'm eating like I don't know a hamburger or a hot dog like I would eat it and then (laughs) don't judge me I would grab a spoon and then just a little bit and then I would just eat it because it's just it's another burst of flavor I don't know oh boy okay that's just me I don't know how to react to that (laughs) everyone's like okay Kevin um maybe we should go back to designing the um, amount of viewers we, we have has been increasing since we started talking about these weird topics. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, well, I'm glad I'm the person to do that. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I got like sidetracked, but I think I'm okay now. Wait. Okay. I think we all got sidetracked. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So... For my text fields, I have, like, what is this? Shayista is asking, are we talking about the foods we missed during this quarantine? We weren't specifically, but I like that. Um, For me, the biggest food that I'm I'm craving for the last several months has been sushi. The, we don't have very many sushi places in our area and they've all been closed. And I'm, I would just, oh, I need some sushi in my life. So let us know in the oh. chat which food, if you if the quarantine was done right now and you can sit down at a restaurant, what food would you eat? Kevin, what about you? Oh my God, sushi sounds so good. Um, I would say there's a specific spot. Not only is it um, like I can't get access to it because of the quarantine, but it's in a different city in San Diego. It's a place called Wei Wei um, Express. And they have the best Chinese chicken wings. Mm. It's like the most crispiest. Like they put like jalapeno, onion on top with like salt and pepper. Oh my God, it's so good. I miss it so much. My mouth's watering. That sounds good. Um, I, I miss that. But my aunt, she owns a um, like couple of sushi restaurants in Chicago. And Ooh. she gets those food for free because they're doing like um, takeout and delivery um so she brings it home and it's like a high-end sushi and she just eats it oh my like, gosh okay. oh yeah we, we yeah, back in la when we lived there uh we often went to kabuki are you familiar with oh yes yes uh-huh. that was our go-to spot oh it was so good oh my gosh wait um we're oh yeah because you used to live in la right we did yeah gosh well we miss you but i'll be back one day all right i'll take you guys <laughs> so we have one minute until portfolio reviews oh okay um how are we gonna do the oh so did you want to share your screen um so w- what we'll do is we'll we'll yeah. finish up what you're doing now and then we'll i'll send you the links and we can just display it on your screen okay perfect. yeah so i can see it in real time otherwise there'll be a little bit of a weird delay because you can't see my oh. screen, I don't think. Oh, okay. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So just quick overview. Still working <laughs> on the style guide while yeah. talking about um, interesting topics. Mm-hmm. So, 
yeah um now i'm just doing navigation which is just like this navigation bar so but look how cool this is you guys like we're building our assets panel with like colors and character styles and components yeah and this is how gonna help tremendously once you actually get to designing i know i've been pushing you back with uh with talk because about gifs and gifs and pineapples on pizza but yeah. <laughs> tomorrow we're gonna focus and we're gonna design yes, some fancy we're gonna things focus and we're gonna make this app you guys <laughs> yes all right so i'm gonna switch over to us for a second i'm going to text you just so i don't reveal your phone number i'm okay. going to text you the two links um just bring those links up on your browser and let, let me know when you have them okay let me see i'm looking at your screen now and of course there's animal crossing on there someone texted you a gorgeous oh. outfit. <laughs> um oh shoot let me just like am i still oh can you guys still see my screen no i can see it they can't they oh, can just okay. see our beautiful faces okay perfect um Cool, so I have them up. Okay, Yeah. So, so I'm back on your screen and what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through two of these portfolios and okay. we're gonna give feedback. And I would love to hear what Kevin thinks. And a big thank you to everyone who has submitted. If you didn't get yours in on time, we do these all the time. Just be on the lookout for that portfolio review tab at the top right. Tomorrow we are going to be looking at daily creative challenge submissions. So those are gonna be really fun. All right. Very cool. Mayor is asking, when will you go, go live tomorrow? So Kevin and I will be live the same time tomorrow, 12 o'clock Pacific, but we do have a jam-packed schedule. Um, let me find the schedule. There we go. Here's the schedule here. And so we started off the day with Victoria. Uh, Victoria and Terry were live with some getting started in drawing. Victoria is a fantastic artist. Then Paul Tranny with the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Sam Peterson, I believe, was sitting down with Voodoo Val, who's in the chat and does not like pineapple on pizza. He was uh, exploring character design. Julia, illustrator, Daily Creative Challenge. Then Kevin and I, right after this, Peter Del Tondo is coming up. He also has uh, very interesting, not interesting, but very strong views on shadows. So talk to him about shadows too. And uh, with the daily creative challenge for, for XD. And then we're wrapping up the day with a sketch party with Kathleen. So it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of cool stuff. Same schedule tomorrow, I believe. So same time, same place. There we go. All right. Thanks. Cool. Are we back on my screen? We are. Okay. So yay. We have Elizabeth Vasilako from Greece. Nice. Uh, super cool. I wish I could visit Greece. That's Me a too. City. Um, and yeah, just looking at their portfolio. Um, so the see, first thing that I would say is, uh -huh. you know, when, when you land on a page like this, obviously the work is going to be what pe people typically look at. But I would also pay attention to what you put in that left hand pane. Of course, you can't control follow and message and that sort of thing and the appreciations and whatever. But uh, I would put your portfolio, or not your portfolio, your, like a bio, who you are and who you've worked for, what your focus is. Are you a UI designer, UX designer? Do you do branding? Put a bunch of stuff in there, you know, just kind of break it out a little bit. I'd love to know some more information about this person. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good way to show your like a quick snippet of your personality too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I agree. Cool. Um, so let's see what work she has. I like how she has like some fashion stuff with like Chanel and Nike. Oh, there's a pizza app. Oh, um, is there pineapple on there? Oh my gosh, I don't know. Okay, let's go into that one first. Yeah, let's see that one. Okay, so. Ooh, very interesting. Oh my God, margarita pizzas are good too. This this looks incredibly delicious. I'm 100% having pizza tonight. Me too. Like all this talk about pizza. Oh, I love it. Um, so interesting name, Da Vinci. Um, maybe it's like an old style pizza from back when, but maybe. Um, I, for I guess like initially looking at it, 
I like how you have, again, that user familiarity. I can't talk either. User familiarity of like having the navigation on the bottom with like the icons um, and then maybe like a secondary navigation on the top left. Um, one thing maybe I suggest is like not having, does she have drop shadow on the text? Yeah, I was about to point that out. Um, maybe tone, maybe not even having that because I think you have drop shadows on the images. So yeah. maybe it's a good contrast. Yeah. Um, and usually an orange yeah. on a white is, is probably enough for accessibility. I mean, things like this, you may not even need to use that orange. You can probably just use a dark, you know, Kevin's big on the 272727. Is that what it was? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can just use like, you know, a dark tone for the text. You probably don't need the, the bright orange colors. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm. Um, and one thing I would suggest with like the use of typography, I noticed that the name or the logo of the app, you're also associating with these navigation um, selections. So I would contrast that and then maybe use the sans serif text on the top here just to, um, I don't know, show some more contrast with typography. Um, and I think another thing was, I think I would tone down the amount of navigations going on because now you have one on the top left, one on the top here, and then one on the bottom where it's, mm. it's like all these different flows that could go anywhere. Yep. But um, but then again, besides that, I like how you have the images really big. They look delicious. Uh, clear indication of what type of pizza it is. Um, and yeah, very nice. Yeah, and there is, if you scroll down a little bit, there is a video. Oh, let me see. Just to make us oh. even more hungry. Oh my gosh, I love it. Prototype video. Oh, okay. Oh, I like the size options like that. Uh huh. Yeah. No. And I'm thing. imagining a lot of this was created using components and states as well to help prototype. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, nice. Let me see that again really quick. I wonder what fluffy is. <laughs> fluffy pizza. Is that deep mm -hmm. dish? It might be. Oh, delivery takeaway. Okay. Wow, thirty dollar pizza. That's Oof. expensive. Okay. Wow, I like it. Nice. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I'll I'll add to this is depending uh -huh. on the device you're designing for, this one looks like it could be possibly an Android device, so this feedback wouldn't necessarily apply, but you know, on the top and the bottom, if you are designing for a modern day iPhone, you have to keep in mind that there's the home indicator at the bottom and there is the lovely notch at the top. So you will you would have to bring some of that content inwards a little bit, but based on the aspect ratio, it may not be an iPhone, but it's hard to tell, but keep that in mind. Yeah, I think that's a good point too. Um, and going back to, I guess, my previous lo-fi designs, I had that like template just to show like, uh, easier way to like work around that uh, template of the iPhone. But. Yeah, and Apple does provide the iOS templates on, if you go to the file menu and then get UI kits, you can download iOS focused UI kits, which has, like Kevin was talking about, templates so you can you know keep those two things in mind. Mm -hmm. Cool, awesome job. Um, Let's see, I kind of want to look at this Nike homepage because I like the photography usage of it. Um, that second see. one? Yeah. Yeah. So let me see. Ooh, very, I like it. Very mm -hmm. Nike. Um, automatically, I like how when I first viewed it, it just reminded me of like an e-commerce yep. consumer facing website. Like it's not like amateurly done. It looks like it's actually you know, furnished. It does look very clean. The only thing that's standing out a little bit is the search bar at the top. I'm not sure if it's the thickness of the search icon or the overall thickness of the the background, the container in the background, but mm -hmm. something's, something's off with it. Do you notice that yeah, too, Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. I think um, maybe if they made it thinner, uh, yeah. height-wise, and maybe tone down the icon uh, stroke size as well. Yeah. 
but overall like really good job um i think maybe you should emphasize this because it's like kind of hidden with the gray background maybe make it i don't know like a black background with white text mm. to really emphasize it um i love the use of images um oh and i love how like you use a different header text like fonts uh font family and then uh had like your caption or body text as like a regular thin size sans serif yep um bold you know emphasize buttons um maybe i would make the text bold because it kind of is like disappearing in the back mm -hmm. um yeah we have a I little bit of a oh uh -huh. sorry we have, if you scroll down just a tiny bit more speaking of disappearing text the the subheaders on these images are a little bit difficult to read mm -hmm. yeah so a lot of times what people will do is if you if you really want the text on top of the images instead of underneath you can put a bit of a gradient towards the yeah. bottom in this case i would probably put like a darker gradient and then bump the text to a lighter color probably just pure white and that'll just ensure that that white text is visible against that background. Yes, I completely agree. And then um, maybe with like a hover state, when they move over it with the mouse, like maybe it'll emphasize the text more. But mm. yeah, I, I agree with that. Like having that um, opacity, you know, gradient background with white text um, showcases the text better. Yep. Um, let's see. So this is interesting. I think this is kind of awkward. Um, having this gray background cut off with like the title of the item. Yeah. I would just keep it paired up together. Uh, maybe just move the gray background lower right here up to where this line is, or um, maybe not even having it. Um, I would just work around this because the spacing's off. Mm -hmm. um, I love this image. I love how the text, I, th I think I saw a TED talk where it's like, it's better to have a darker background with white text um, be more visible for a user than having a white background with black text on top. I forgot what it was. Interesting. Yeah, but um, um, I like the use of photography and typography together. Um, let me see. Yeah, same information like this is kind of disappearing within the blue um but this works perfectly because yep. it's a white background more to explore girls athletes love bestseller sustainable materials nice um oh i like how like this is kind of like the footer where all athletes belong join us sign in nice um, let me look at your information architecture really quick. So you have the navigation on top, a CTA, a header image, um, another, you know, shop CTA. I like how you have everything set up. I just think it's a lot of scrolling where at this point, like you'll lose the user like of like their interest i think having a clear like indication of like what you want in the beginning and then maybe having them going through this flow um is a lot better but i think like how you structured it with all this you know information was really well done Yep. Uh, with like this grid structure as well. So. Totally agree. And the only thing I'll add to this is uh -huh. very similar to the your uh, the Behance profile that you have. I would love some additional information. You know, uh, for something like this, obviously it's a landing page for Nike, but I would love to know, did you do this just to build up your portfolio? Was this done actually for Nike? Or what was the thought process behind it? You know, why did you decide to put... Uh, a large feature image instead of a smaller one, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Things like that, especially if I'm trying to hire a designer, I would love to know how they got from concept to the final piece. Totally, I agree. Um, and 
Yeah, I, I guess like another thing is like even like interviewing with Disney or like companies, they, yeah, they would love to see the final product, but they're more interested in like the process and yeah. like, um, you know, how did you solve this problem? Why did you choose to do this? Like, I would, I would, I mean, fun projects are good. Like inspiration projects are good, but I think if you want something in your portfolio, it's more of like, oh, I noticed this you know, navigational issue on the Nike website. This is my solution mm -hmm. of like, you know, how I solved it. Yep, totally. Yeah. Awesome. So let's let's switch over to, we have about 10 minutes left. Let's switch over to the next portfolio. Okay. Danning. And this Lou. is Danning, who I believe is, a, he's a regular on Adobe Live. <gasps> nice. So hopefully he's watching. Wait, he has oh, an Animal, animal crossing. crossing. What? Oh boy. Okay, we're going to do that one first. Of course, and we have to. And he's also from Canada. There like you go. Howard. Oh my gosh. This could okay. be secretly me. <laughs> okay. Um, so XD daily creative challenge. Um, whoa, what text is this? It's Animal a fancy text. You, I'm just like, I'm so excited right now. I'm like shaking. Um, so the challenge prompt over the course of this challenge, we'll be designing out various elements that will make up a dashboard on a topic of your choice. Oh, I think this is one of the challenges that, that I was running. So it's kind of cool to see an Animal Crossing inspired design come out of this. Okay, I love, I'm sorry, I love this pattern and it matches um, Tom Nook's shirt. Mm -hmm. Like perfectly, I love it. Pain points, oh my God, this is so cute with like this crying emoji. I'm so happy right now. Um, <laughs> so, okay, I don't know what's going on on my island, like who's coming? Right, who's coming? I want to know the churn up price on my island and my friends' islands as well. Mm. Yes, I don't know the seasonal critters and where to find them. Oh, interesting. I would like to form and join a community with my friends so I can visit and share with them. Yes, I love how they displayed this. Like, this is really nice. Oh my goodness, I am so happy. And like the emojis like or like the what is it called Reaction reactions reactions yep included with the title this is great quality content the dashboard should always show the most important data on the home page churn up analytics this week this month smart yes today's cranny churn up price am pm premium items that's right because the mm -hmm. churn up prices change am and pm Yep. Daily updates, visitors, events, news, seasonal updates, fish, insects, and furniture. Yes, because I want to get tarantulas, and I want that. What's that long fish on Animal Crossing? It's like red. Oh boy, I, I know what you're talking about. Aren't they out of season now? I know the tarantula was repl yeah. replaced with the scorpions. They are, but like I was shook when I caught that fish. I was like, oh my goodness, like. <laughs> It came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. it, it, I sold all of them because I needed that. Shay is saying, I don't know anything about Animal Crossing, but this is super cute. And Kevin's reaction is making me want to try this game. Please. And then oh, I should have included my Nintendo. I, I will next Tomorrow. Stream, but If you're yeah, okay yeah. with a bunch of people adding you. Like there's there's almost 1,300 people watching right now. So you might get a lot of ads. Oh my God. Can we like start like a Discord or Slack channel and like showcase our like turn up prices? Oh my gosh. Let's just be billionaires on the game. Like, that would be great. Or fish, that's the one. Yes. Thank you, Gus um, and Natasha. <laughs> oh gosh, I love this so much. I'm so happy. Wireframe. Okay. The navigation bar. I love how you show the layout, the structure, um, and the mock-up that you put it in. Like, it's beautifully well done. Um, you know, showcasing what you, you know, you're echoing what you, you know, put in the beginning, like what mm -hmm. you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. Um, oh, design system. <gasps> Can I just like use this one? Like, forget my design system. Like, I love your design system. The, oh, it's called Flink. Oh, interesting. The I've never heard of that. Flink Heavy Humming. Just the name of the font family like matches with the games and like it's just so cute. Primary color. I love how they yes they name their color island green, island yellow, dark green. Mm. Showing the hex value. Yep. Secondary colors. Um, okay, interesting. I would showcase the secondary colors name as well. 
like you did with the primary mm -hmm. navigation menu. I love how they have uh, these over exaggerated curves, right? Because that in the game, it emphasizes a lot of over exaggeration of like curves within the corners, a lot of circular uh, design elements. So yep. I, I think they really embodied that really well. Um, and the icons really well as well. Yeah, the only thing I would say is um, on those icons in specific, when working with stroked or outline based icons, as they get smaller and smaller, they become a little bit difficult to see. And also with the, you know, having the text, the name underneath it is is nice. It's It's tricky with the white outline and the darker text. So I would play around with that a little bit, either go for the same color on both or, uh, if you use similar icons to Animal Crossing, then you can probably get rid of the actual text. There's a lot of different ways you can do it, but right now it looks a little bit strange with the white and the dark. Mm -hmm. Also kind of like um, clumped up and like no breathing room. So yeah. even just having like um, just the icon filled the whole box and then the name of it in the bottom beneath the box, like yep. that would be good as well. But yeah, this is still very beautiful. I, I love it so much. Um, Mock-ups, oh my gosh, with the gr trees and the grass background. Yeah, that's the background I was going to show how to create. I'll do that tomorrow. Okay, okay I'm excited. Um, okay, let's watch this video. Okay, we do have about three minutes left. Okay, I could like just look at this whole, the whole day right now. <gasps> it shows the analytics. Oh my God, I love this. Oh, it's like a dashboard, like an internal portal. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, beautiful, beautiful. And it has their profile on the top right. Messages, news, oh my goodness. All these fishes, they have the pictures of the fishes, bugs. <gasps> I am going to appreciate this and I'm going to follow because Kevin I is love so it. happy right now. I prototype. This you could pro, you could click through it. What? Oh my gosh, I love this. Okay, I know we're out of time almost, but like. So I'm while you're while you're clicking through this prototype, what are you going to be tackling tomorrow for your project? Yes, tomorrow. Um, so I will be basically applying the design system that we created today mm -hmm. uh, towards our app, and really showcasing like the quick, fast process um, it is to like design something with a style guide and assets panel um, polished. So yeah, Sweet. and maybe prototyping. So we'll see. Got to squeeze oh in the God. prototype. Look at this. This is amazing. Ah, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Wait, what were you going to say? You got to squeeze in prototyping. I know that's it's like an important thing, right? Yeah. Um, thank you. No, thank you, um, Danny Lou. This was amazing. I love it so much. Why is it not letting? Oh, I have to re-log in. So I'll do that later. But great job, great work. I'm gonna look through your stuff and <laughs> add me on Animal Crossing. <laughs> And as Shea, uh, Sheesta is saying, Kevin's excitement is contagious. I agree. I, oh my gosh, I love it. I love it so much. Great, great job. Great work. All right. So we have a bit of minute left, Kevin. Uh, maybe okay. hop back over to XD. Tell everyone what you've been working on and again, what you're going to be tackling tomorrow. Okay. So um, you guys, we you know, created a style guide using some low fidelity, high fidelity wireframes that I previously created. Uh, we determined the colors by getting inspired by the Able Sisters, as well as the UI um, in the actual game with this pink. Yep. And it's always safe to have these black gradient colors of black, gray, and misty gray. Uh, then after that, we grabbed everything from our lo-fi wireframes as far as typography, and showcase the point size, the font family, and the font weight, um, and showcasing like an example of like how the text works together. Uh, from there, we looked at components where we showcased all the icons that we're using, 
the dividers as far as lines, um, the buttons for primary, secondary, and tertiary. Is that how you say it? The third button. Tertiary, maybe? Tertiary. Yeah, tertiary. Um, and then from there, we did the banners and cards that you know are going to be showcased for the catalog uh, patterns and items. Um, then text fields, and then uh, I didn't do this, but like this is basically just going through this navigation and making it a component. Yeah. Um, some other things are like images and stuff like that, but that's more like high for high fidelity for tomorrow. So yeah. sweet, I love it. Cool. All right, that is Yay. going to wrap it up for myself and Kevin. A big thank you to everyone that. who has joined us today. Hope you're all well. Hope you're all staying safe. And we will see you all tomorrow, same time, same place. Stick around. Peter Del Tondo is coming up in just a few minutes with today's Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge. We'll see you all then. All right, I think we're off.